Hey students, nice to see you. This is 8th grade math, unit 3, lesson 9. We're going to learn that slopes don't have to be positive. Sometimes we have situations where rates are negative and rates mean, negative rates mean the graph of the line is going to point downward. Okay, let's get started with 9.1. Which one doesn't belong? Which is the odd line out? You need to explain why you have chosen the one line that you think is different from the others and why that is the odd line out. You might say line S. You might think line S is kind of odd for some reason. Tell me why you believe, why you believe so. You might think line T is odd for some reason. Tell me why you say so. What about line V? Does that seem strange to you or line U? Now, there's no right or wrong answer, but you have to explain why you think so and write your response. Nine point two. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Noah put $40 on his fare card. Every time he rides public transportation, $2.50 is subtracted from the amount available on his card. How much money in dollars is available on his card after he takes zero rides, one ride, two rides, and X number of rides. Okay, let's go ahead and answer this. Make sure you take notes and write carefully on your paper while I scribble it out on the screen. For A, if he has taken zero rides, then the amount of money left on his card is going to be $40 minus zero times $2.50. The cost of the ride is $2.50 and he's taken zero rides. So he ends up with his full $40 left on his card. Go ahead and write that down on your paper. For B, if he has taken one ride, then it's $40 minus one ride times the cost of the ride, $2.50. And the answer is $37.50 remaining on his card. And for C, if he has taken two rides, then it's $40 minus two times the cost of a ride. That'll be $35 left on his card. $35 remaining after taking two rides. What about D? D says after X rides. Okay, well, you can tell by what we've already done, we're on track to answer this question. After zero rides, he has $40. Let's just say the cost I'm sorry, the amount remaining on his card, let's call that Y. Here, the amount remaining on his card, Y, equals $40 minus zero rides times 250. And then for situation B, the amount remaining on his card, Y, equals $40 times one, time, I'm sorry, $40 minus one times the cost of one ride. And then finally, in situation C, the amount of money on his card is $40 minus 2 times the cost per ride. Do you recognize a pattern? Now we can write down the amount of money remaining on his card after X rides is, it'll be equal to the original $40 on his card minus X number of rides he has taken times the cost per ride, $2.50. Ding, we got it. That way, we can use this equation to find the cost or the amount remaining on his card 
no matter how many rides he has taken. Number two, graph the relationship between amount of money on the card and number of rides. Okay, I'm going to use the information we already have. So when he has taken zero rides, I think I better scoot this up a little. Hmm, I'm worried because when I scoot it up, I will lose all of my writing, but I better do it anyway. Do, 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 there we go, no problem. Okay, when he has taken zero rides, that means the number of rides, x equals zero, he has $40 remaining on his card, which is what he started out with, so that makes sense. When he has taken zero rides, he has the $40 remaining on his card. That makes sense. After he has taken one ride, he has $37.50 on his card. So I'm going to put a dot there at y equals 37.50, x equals 1, one ride. When he has taken two rides, he has $35 left on his card. So I'll put a dot there at y equals $35, x equals 2. I need another point on here to help me make sure I get a straight line. So let's say x equals 10 rides. After he has taken 10 rides, how much money does he have? He has $40 minus 10 rides times the price per ride, which is $2.50. So that's going to be 10 times 250. That's 25. 40 minus 25 is 15. Now I'll plot that point to help me. After he has taken 10 rides, he has $15 remaining on his card. That's good enough. I have enough points now to draw a line. It's something like that. Please draw that in on your graph. And let's answer question three. How many rides can Noah take before the card runs out of money. Where do you see this number on your graph? Okay, well, I could answer this an easy way. If he has $40 and the cost per ride is $2.50, then it's just $40 divided by $2.50. Are you good at long division? Do you remember how to divide numbers? $40 divided by $2.50. That equals 16. He can take 16 rides before his money is used up. But you don't have to do long division if you have a graph. You can see this point on the line. Right here, when the amount of money left on his card equals zero, that is where y equals zero on the x-axis here. On the x-axis, y equals zero. So he has no money left at 16 rides. We see this number on the x-axis where y equals zero. So let me help you type that in. I'll move this up so you can see what I'm typing. I've already deleted my line, but I think you have it on your paper, right? Let me draw that again. I probably deleted it too soon. We started from $40, and after 16 rides, he has no money left. So how many rides can Noah take before the card runs out of money? He can take 16 rides. There we go. He can take 16 rides before the money runs out. You can see this on the graph when y equals $0 which is on the x-axis. At y equals zero, 
we see that x equals 16 rides taken. Okay, students, don't just copy my answer. Look at the graph and be sure that this makes sense to you. Let me say that again. When y equals zero dollars remaining, we see that x equals 16 rides taken. Okay, good job, guys. Take notes, write your answers carefully, pause the video. Next problem, travel habits in July. Here is a graph that shows the amount of money on Hans Fare card for every day of last July. Oh, look at the graph. It's just one horizontal line. On day one, he has $20. On day 12, he has $20. On day 24, he has $20. Oh my goodness, the amount stays the same. It's constant. Number one, describe what happened with the amount on Hans Fair card in July. Okay, can you describe this yourself? Let me help you. Every day in July, the amount on Hans Fair card stayed the same. Stayed the same, which was $20. $20, there we go. Number two says, plot and label three points on the line. Well, I've already drawn three points on the line, so why don't I go ahead and label those? Just get your pencil out and plot and label. That means label the coordinate points. So I'm drawing the parentheses all together now. So remember, really, really make sure you remember the X coordinate comes first and the X and Y coordinate are separated by a comma. That's why I went ahead and just started drawing my, my parentheses because I just thought of that first. Okay, there's my comma. So this first point that I already drew is X equals one, Y equals 20 x equals 1, y equals 20. The next point that I drew right here is x equals 12, y equals 20. y equals 20 every day in July. And then the last point that I drew was x equals 24, y equals 20. Plot and label three points on your graph. They don't need to be the same as mine. If you want to, you can also put down here the three points that you chose. X equals one, Y equals 20, that's what I chose. You can choose something different. You don't need to copy me on this one. It says any points. Okay, number three. Write an equation that represents the amount on the card in July, Y, after X days. Hmm, okay, I'm just gonna scroll up here to make sure I'm not off camera. And I'm gonna think about that one here. Write an equation that represents the amount on the card in July after in the card Y after X days. Well, look, every day nothing is changing. So there's a rate in this problem, which would be the dollars on the card per day, the change in dollars on the card per day times whatever day it's been, plus he started at $20. Well, there's no change. So this K, it equals zero. And zero times X, that's going to be a big fat zero too. It means just plus 20. The starting amount is all you have no matter what day it is in July. So my equation is Y dollars on the card equals just 20. That's my equation for this line. No matter what day it is, any value of X, Y equals 20 for any value of X. 
So there's no x in my equation. If you have a straight horizontal line, the equation of the line does not have a value for x, just whatever that value of y is. For example, this line that I just drew, it is at y equals 25. So the equation of the line is y equals 25. It doesn't matter what x is. It doesn't even depend on x. Just every point is y equals 25. OK, let me keep going. Number four, what value makes sense for the slope of the line that represents the amounts on Han's fare card in July? Oh, well, this is something I noticed right off the bat. In my equation, I said k equals zero. There's no change. The dollars on the card per day has no change. So I think a slope of zero makes sense because there's no change in rise over run. A slope of zero. Okay, good job, guys. Take careful notes. Make sure you're writing everything down and even more. If you have more to write down than me, make sure you do it. Pause the video while you're getting ready. Let's keep going. Are you ready for more? Let's say you have taken out a loan and are paying it back. Which of the following graphs have positive slope and which have negative slope? Mm. Okay, we read that problem again. Make sure you understand the situation. Let's say you have taken out a loan and are paying it back. Okay, we're paying back money. Got it. Situation number one. The amount paid on the vertical axis and time since payment started on the horizontal axis. Hmm, is that going to have a positive slope? I need to sketch this for me to figure it out. So here is situation one. And they said amount paid on the vertical axis. So vertical is up and down. The y-axis means the amount you have paid so far. And the x-axis is time since payments started. Okay, so this is time since payment started. So at this point here, when x equals zero, payments had not started yet. And then later, say, when x equals 10, maybe that's after 10 months, so 10 payments, something like that. So what do you think? Does the amount paid go up? as time goes or does the amount paid go down as time goes? Will this have a positive slope or a negative slope? Well, at month one you've paid something, at month two you've paid more, at month three you've paid more, at month five the amount you've paid is even more. The amount you've paid is gaining as time goes by. So we know this is going to have a positive slope. Go ahead and write your answer for number one. And listen, I'm not answering this perfectly for you. But if you understand what I'm saying, then you can write your answer if the slope is positive or negative. Number two. Amount owed on the vertical axis and time remaining until the loan is paid off on the horizontal axis. Okay, let's sketch that. So they said on the vertical axis, it is the amount owed. And I'm going to abbreviate AMT for amount. The amount owed, okay, and time remaining until the loan is paid off on the horizontal axis. So the x-axis, that is time remaining on the loan. So not time since you began, how much time is remaining. So look at that graph. If x equals zero, then you have no more time remaining on the loan. I guess the amount owed would be zero at the time when you have no more time remaining. Let's say x equals 10 and you have 10 months remaining on your loan. 
Well, then you're going to have some higher amount remaining. And when x equals 5, you're going to have maybe half as much remaining. So as the time remaining on your loan increases, the amount you owe on your loan increases. This one's kind of hard to imagine because it's sort of like a backwards time. The starting time would be here when you have the full amount, the full amount of time remaining. Okay, go ahead and answer if this slope has a positive slope or a negative slope. And can you explain why? I think I'm going to help you explain this one. Let me help you with this one. I'll write a sentence, and I'd like to see this sentence on your paper, or you can put it in your own words, but let's make sure you understand this one. For two. As the time remaining on the loan increases, the amount still owed increases. Okay, let me go on to number three. I'm going to clear my screen. You should pause the video now and take notes. Number three. Amount paid on the vertical axis and time remaining until the loan is paid off on the horizontal axis. Let me sketch this. Okay, the vertical axis was amount paid. I'm just using AMT for amount. I'm so lazy. Amount paid and the horizontal axis is time remaining until the loan is paid off. Okay. Time remaining. Now this didn't say time since you began. We're not starting at the beginning time. We're looking at time remaining. So when x equals zero, this means you have zero months remaining on your loan. And then the amount paid. Well, let's say you have zero months remaining. That means you paid a full amount. That would be the full amount up here. I'm just going to write full, like whatever it was. Say you borrowed $10,000. You have paid off the full $10,000 when x equals zero time remaining. Let's say you had one month remaining on your plan, on your loan. Well then, you've almost paid it all off. You've almost paid the full amount. If this is the full amount, you'd be just below that. And at x equals, say, two months remaining, well, you'd have still some more payments to go. Let's say x equaled ten months remaining then I guess the amount you paid is pretty low. If it's, if there's 10 months remaining on your loan, then you haven't paid that much yet. The amount paid would be pretty low. Would it be good for me to use numbers when I explain this? I wonder if I could try to explain this better with numbers. Oh, that, that axis looks terrible. I'm going to start again. My pen is, is really acting bad. Okay, I'm going to go slow. Okay, I'm starting over. The amount paid on the vertical axis. If you already know the answer, you don't have to listen to me. But I'm going to explain in detail. I think if I use numbers, I can explain this better. I'll just make up some numbers. Let's say you borrowed $10,000. No, no, that's too much. Let's say you borrowed $1,000. And you're going to pay it back at $100 a month with no interest because you borrowed it from a friend who's not charging you a loan fee. The horizontal axis is time remaining on your loan. Time remaining. Now, x equals 0 means you have 0 time remaining. x equals 10 is the very beginning. When you borrowed it, you have 10 months remaining. And the amount you paid when the loan is finished, when you have paid it all off, you have paid $1,000 off. 
When you still have one month remaining, you have paid $900 off. When you have two months remaining, you have paid $800 off. When you have three months remaining, you have paid $7 off. When you have four months remaining, you have paid $600 off, and so on and so on. Okay, what does the slope of this line look like? Is it positive or negative? Can you explain why? Let me help you. As the time remaining on the loan increases, which is like backwards of what we would think of as time goes by, you have paid off less of the loan. In other words, if you have more time remaining than the amount paid so far has been less. And that makes sense. If you have 10 months remaining, you haven't paid that much yet. But if you have one month on your loan remaining, you've almost paid it off. Please stop the video and take notes. Make sure that it all makes sense to you. You need to write down on your paper as much as you can to help you understand these situations. If you didn't understand it, you didn't write enough down. Make sure you write down as much as you need to to understand everything about the situation. Next problem. Elena borrowed some money from her brother. She pays him back by giving him the same amount every week. The graph shows how much she owes after each week. Look at the graph. The amount owed in dollars is on the y-axis and time in weeks is on the x-axis. Number one, what is the slope of the line? Okay, you know how to find slope of the line. Rise over run. I want you to pause the video and find the slope of the line on your own. Then you can check your answer with mine. Ready, go. Pause the video. Okay, did you find the slope? Now you can double check it with mine. I'm just going to look at the slope over the entire line because the beginning and the ending seem like easy points to read. But I could choose any two points I want. Anyway, it begins at 15, 16, 17, 18. It begins at $18. Y equals 18 right here. At X equals 0. That's the first point that I'm looking at. And then at x equals 6, y equals 0. So the rise in this situation is actually a going down. It goes from 18 to 0. The rise is negative 18. It went down 18 units. And the run is over 6 units. So the slope is negative 3. Number two, explain how you know whether the slope is positive or negative. Hold on, that was number one. I'm going to label that. And then number two, explain how you know whether the slope is positive or negative. Well, I look and see if the line is decreasing or increasing. In other words, if the y values, oh, did I spell values wrong? There we go. I can't remember spelling. Is that one L or two Ls? This doesn't have a spell checker, so you might need a dictionary. If you're copying me, you better get a dictionary. In other words, if the y values are going down as x values are increasing, then 
the slope is negative. Okay, it's just looking at the direction of the line. This line's direction is going down. Number three, what does the slope represent in this situation? Hmm, well, I'm going to let you think about that for a second. It's a negative slope. Is it the rate that she pays back her loan? Is she paying it back in a negative way? Hmm, it's like the decrease in the amount owed per week. That's what I, that's how I want to say this. I'm going to clear everything. Remember that the slope is negative three. So every week, the amount owed goes down by $3. So I look at it, the slope is, and I'll write this down to help you, the slope is the change in the amount owed per week. It means that the amount she owes decreases. I, I want to say that again. It means that the amount she owed, no wait, I'm going to change that. The total amount she still owes, that's better, decreases by $3 per week. Okay, I'm satisfied with that answer. You can write this in your own words. I'm happy to help you if it makes sense to you, but if it doesn't make sense to you, please write it in your words. Number four, how much did Elena borrow? Oh, we can see this right on the graph. Look, when time equals zero, That means she has paid back no money yet. Right? The weeks of paying back are zero. At x equals zero, she has paid back no money yet. So we can see the full amount she borrowed where x equals zero. Right here on the x-axis where x equals zero, y equals 18. She borrowed $18. That's how much she owed him before she started paying him back. Let's write out an answer for number four. Go ahead and try writing this out yourself and then you can check what I wrote after you pause the video. At x equals zero, she had not paid back any money. So we can see that she mm, my spelling is bad there. She borrowed eighteen dollars. She owed. I'm just going to rewrite this. In other words, she owed $18 before paying anything back. I'll keep going. Number five. Number five. How much time will it take for Elena to pay back all the money she borrowed? Okay, well, we're going from $18 all the way down until she owes $0. Here on the x-axis, that is where y equals zero. When y equals zero, then she doesn't owe any more money. And you can see that happening at x equal to six. I hope you're getting really good at reading graphs. Yeah, you've got to be good. You've got to be able to see that the amount owed equals zero on y equals zero, which is along the x-axis. Let me write it down. When the amount she owes equals zero, then she has paid it off. 
y equals 0 on the x-axis. And then finally, when, when y equals 0, x equals 6 weeks. This means that it took her six weeks to pay it off. Okay, guys, you got it. Pause the video and take your notes carefully. I'd like to see you sketch some things on your graph too. Sketch it out so that it makes sense to you. Let's read the summary together. At the end of winter in Maine, they're just going to describe a new situation here. At the end of winter in Maine, the snow on the ground was 30 inches deep. There was a particularly warm day and the snow melted at a rate of one inch per hour. The graph shows the relationship between the time since the snow started to melt and the depth of the snow. So look again. The y-axis shows you the depth of snow in inches, and the x-axis shows you time since the snow started to melt. So the depth of the snow is going down over time at a constant rate. Let's keep reading. The slope of the graph is negative 1. Since the rate of change is negative 1 inch per hour, that is, the depth goes down 1 inch per hour. You can see that here. Every hour it's going down 1 inch. The vertical intercept is 30, since the snow was 30 inches deep when the warmth started to melt the snow. So they started at 30 inches of snow. And then we have a negative slope because it's melting and the depth of snow goes down per hour. It just also happens to be negative in this case, since after each hour that passes, there is one inch less snow. Let me keep reading. Graphs with negative slope often describe situations where some quantity is decreasing over time, like the depth of snow on warm days or the amount of money on a fare card being used to take rides on buses. Slopes can be positive, negative, or even zero. A slope of zero means there is no change in the y value, even though the x value may be changing. Let me just draw that again. We saw that in the beginning of the assignment. Do you remember? If you have a slope of zero, let's say your line just goes flat like this, that is a slope of zero. There is no change in y even though the x value may be changing. So when x equals 1, it's the same. When x equals 2, y is the same. When x equals 3, y is the same. Here's an example. For example, Elena won a contest where the prize was a special pass that gives her free bus rides for a year. Her fare card has $5 on it when she won the prize. Here is a graph of the amount of money on her fare card after winning the prize. Now down here is the graph, but can you guess what it would look like? She started with $5, but she never has to pay for a ride. So all year long, her fare card still has $5 on it. Let's see the graph they showed. At two days, she still has $5. At five days, she still has $5. The vertical intercept is 5, since the graph starts when she has $5 on her fare card. Right here, the vertical intercept, it starts at 5. The slope of the graph is 0, since she doesn't use her fare card for the next year, meaning the amount on her fare card doesn't change for a year. 
In fact, all graphs of linear relationships with slopes equal to zero are horizontal. A rate of change of zero means that. So let me say that again. All graphs that are a straight horizontal line have a slope equal to zero. We call that zero slope. And my line doesn't look very straight. Let me try another one. There we go. There's a straight line. Zero slope. In these kind of lines, the y values remain the same. Right here. From one point to the next, the y values remain the same. No matter what x is, the y value is the same. Okay, I've said that many times and probably too slowly. I guess you're sick of hearing it. Good job, guys. Make sure that your paper is neat and complete. Your work must be neat and complete before you turn it in. See you later.